Hello lads and gals and non-binary pals, Ertod is here and let's talk war strategies. Now, war, our large scale open field PvP battles, is where the game really shines. This is what this game is about. This is the best experience that you can get in this game. And to be good at it, you actually need to know a lot of things and prepare yourself for the actual PvP. Now, let's talk about what you have to do to prepare yourself, what you have to remember and always think about during a fight, and what other things and tricks you can employ in order to um, win win a fight or win the entire war now we are here uh fighting and this is a really good fight our enemy does a really good job we are fighting tpd and we are end alliance and here's what i have learned so far let's start with preparing for war like before a fight started before a pass opened that leads uh, to you fighting another alliance or um, it is the start of the season or whatever before all of that what do you have to do first and most important you start with doing your policies and you have to focus military expansion policies that expand the legion capacity that is uh, the first priority and top priority you gotta max them out as soon as possible before, ideally, you do all of them before any fighting happens in order to have biggest legion possible. Now, the second most important, maybe it is even as important, like not a second, but as important as a military expansion is that you max out your free healing or it is elixir production speed policies. Uh, in your policy center get all of the free healing options and max them as soon as possible if you're already caught in uh, big fights and you feel like you are not healing your troops fast enough consider maybe jamming a little bit uh, your policies for that because remember uh, as soon as you unlock them that is a daily elixir production bonus so the sooner you unlock that the sooner you get all the benefits from having it unlocked and you know leave all the resource policies till the end of the season once you won the war and you're just farming waiting for the end of the season that's when you can focus on your resource gathering and etc policies now before the actual war started and you are able to earn your merits uh, through actual pvp remember to do merit farming arrange battles with your uh, allies or uh, with other alliances that i don't know you're neutral to whatever they're sure somebody should be there available to fight you maybe it is even your like just a farm alliance of your main alliance and you jump out of your main alliance into your farm alliance so you are in a different alliance in order to fight your members together in a friendly fight in order to earn merits as soon as they are available in your season and you have to focus buying out all these elixir items as much as possible this is the top priority and hoard them as much as possible you never use them in order to do friendly fights again. You earn merits to buy them and you save them until the actual war starts. This is really, really important. Never let your uh, hospital run uh, full capacity. You gotta make sure you always have some a few wounded units or maybe no wounded units but hospital is still producing elixir this is this means this is time to go and arrange a friendly fight to do some more merit farming 
So make sure you bought them all out and make sure you refresh them for 100 gems. Ideally, both of the shops, although the daily shop usually has the lower amount of elixir, but if you can afford like 100% refresh and buy out uh, the weekly shop, and if you can afford it, and most likely you can afford it, please refresh the daily supply as well and buy out all the elixir items there as well. well after you bought all the elixir items and you are sure you still have a lot of merits uh, hanging well then you can focus on buying like uh, speed ups uh, the uh, pet refresh items pet skills whatever and the, and the keys of course but top priority elixir remember that next thing that you are uh, focusing on are your heroes and you have to level up till max level your main march most likely most likely your main march are mages unless you're a spender and maybe most likely uh, if you are a big spender then you don't really need my advice uh, if you're here to get an advice most likely your main march are mages focus on getting them to level whatever is max level uh 50 for example before the war starts do not level up any other heroes with your experience books no, the, okay they are not here do not level up your any other heroes before you leveled up your main march well could be working uh, alongside on your secondary match marches in order to fight ducklings um because you need to get experience most of them have to go into your main march just make sure your main march is ready for war if you are able to max out more marches like a secondary march third tertiary march as well well great but focus on a main march for sure as well as of course the artifacts for your main march have them also at the highest level possible at the highest star level possible because um, that's where you will be most useful at focus on your main march heroes level them up as much as possible and get your main march artifact to the highest level you can get it to. however however right before like a day or a few days before the pass opens there is one more thing you want to do to prepare yourself for war because uh, it is going to be a race of who builds towers faster. The pass opens, you, your alliance is going to build all those towers in order to push further into the region. Now, you want to make sure you have your Ordo ready. Level up the engineering tree for Ordo and level, up, well, level it up until like level 42. Ideally, level 43 also gives the like this elite key talent or whatever it is called, but it's it doesn't really matter for engineering purposes. So all it matters is that you get level 42, I believe, as well as of course you want to add the uh, engineering uh, artifact to your order. I I feel like. The activating the skill, the engineering bonus skill, doesn't really matter because I am usually capped on the how much uh, my march adds to the building speed. So I feel like it doesn't really matter, but I mean, popping it doesn't cost anything. So yeah, whatever, whenever you feel it, you can pop it, but usually it doesn't matter. It, However, I felt it matters when destroying barricades. Maybe that's the case oh we are actually having some active push against us going on um, <laughs> I, I guess I gotta I gotta do some ac actual war and I will get back to you after I'm done with that yeah we are we are in the next section like that is with we have finished the preparation to war now the actual fight have started your alliance has built uh, all the towers towards each other and you are now clashed in the middle of the map fighting each other 
the most important thing is that you follow group instructions. There will be... There will be uh, your officers of your alliance, leader of your alliance, giving instructions like push or fall back or uh, whatever, whatever. Even if you are 100% sure you know better, follow group instructions. This is an alliance based a team play game and going rogue will not do any good gotta follow group instructions only in that case you as a team your alliance as a team can be strong if everybody does whatever they want there will be no success if you wanna if you you're 100 percent sure maybe apply for an officer position you're 100% sure you know better, but if you are not an officer, follow group instructions, really watch them, like, you gotta, you gotta really, during an active fight, you gotta really watch uh, all the markers your officers put on the map, uh, maybe in chat or join Discord if there is voice chat going on, uh, in order to coordinate the effort. Now, uh, well, w if you know better, apply for an officer position and you will be in charge of doing everything, uh, coordinating everyone. And very important as well, if you, even if you are 100% sure you know better, restrain from, you know, flaming in chat like, ah, what the hell? Why are we doing this and not this? Are you all insane? It doesn't help. Because yeah. any other multiplayer online game this does not help if you know better apply for an officer position and if you are uh, if you do become an officer well congratulations now uh, use your 100% know better knowledge uh, for the good of the alliance if you're not an officer follow instructions and do not flame in chat this is the most important thing uh, during an active war in Call of Dragons. Other things to consider, quite often uh, your high power players are going to send rallies against enemy, like this one. Whenever a high power player does a rally, all the bonuses from technologies and artifacts and uh, leveled up heroes apply to entire rally. So. This rally is going to be 2 million troops. So 2 million troops are going to benefit from a T5 high power player. Right? If you are a low power player, you realize that average power of the fight, I don't know, is uh, 30,000, 40,000, whatever. And you fall behind. You are uh, not 1,000 million, I'm sorry. And you're like, 18 million power or 20 million power um, caught in a fight of 40 plus million power players. Now, maybe, and this maybe is like maybe 90%, <laughs> chance is that the best thing you can do is not actually engage in fights uh, versus enemy legions, but instead just exclusively join rallies of T5 players of high power. Why is that so? Because most likely, if you have low power, that means you do not have your technology tree very high level. And I, I now realize that <laughs> this is something I should have included into the preparation part, is of course uh, pushing your technology power and especially your war technology power. Maybe um, you are not, if you're low power, maybe you are not so far in your uh, war technology. Basically, I am not really uh, good on the uh, war technology and that is my mistake that I now realized. So your troops are more likely to do a lot of useful damage to enemy if they are part of a rally of T5 player benefiting from all the maxed out technology of this player. Instead, 
of you fighting with your low technologies level and dying a lot to enemy legions that are likely having higher power because as we uh, determined this is a probably a war of a on average higher power players now this could be not as fun and could feel not as fun but uh, that's the best thing you can do if you are you know if you send your legions and you just die immediately you are not really useful you're just giving free merits to the enemy so better instead join Morales. maybe even exclusively that's all you're gonna be doing during fights now uh, next thing is you have to learn all the strong uh, advantages that you can use during a fight they include fighting on your territory you can see there is um, multiple alliances all uh, bordering each other you have to make sure you're fighting from your own territory as much as possible of course at some point you're probably likely to go into enemy territory and fight there however if you are uh, if you have the option to fight in your territory remember you have to do that and not do that in enemy territory because there are alliance technologies that give bonuses to your pvp stats when you are fighting within your territory now other thing to keep in mind is that if you have all these barricades built up they are built there for a reason do not fight like you know on the edge of the territory even though it is tempting you know as far as you can reach yeah you know enemy is somewhere here and you're fighting on the edge well no you build all those barricades for a reason stay back and let the enemy get into your barricades get real slow when they cannot retreat that's when you kill them take advantage of the slow that the barricade applies next thing is you have to remember that in call of dragons there is this unit advantage system and do not engage in disadvantageous fights and what is a disadvantageous fight it's the fight where in the end report multiple battle report or just one versus one whatever report uh, is where you lost uh, more units severely wounded than your enemy if that happened well most likely that is a bad fight 99% that it is a bad fight and you lost avoid fights where you lose more troops than your enemy when you get more damage than you deal damage avoid them as much and if you find yourself getting caught all the time in such fights uh, all the reports uh, end up you having more troops lost than the enemy consider maybe you are better off joining rallies maybe you are doing something wrong and you need to fix that analyze your whatever you are doing uh, of course you also have to learn all the uh, skills of your units you got to remember them uh, what is their advantage uh, infantry is basically the same for all the uh, all the uh, races but other units have special racial abilities depending on whether you play uh, orcs humans or elves learn those and remember them and keep them in mind and don't, don't forget to use proper city skins uh, if you are running mages if you want a skin that increases magic attack well use that if you're uh, using marksman right now and you're not using mages uh, go for a marksman skin i'm using those with cavalry so remember to change your skins in order to get those extra percents but also don't forget to change them back uh, once you are using you're no longer using uh, marksman well you don't want to get this uh, minus uh, mage attack from that skin when you uh, find yourself real low on hp uh, just retreat you don't want to be fighting with like 30k units against a full march because you're just gonna get a lot of damage and you will not deal a lot of damage if you see uh you are low just just walk away just retreat and uh, refresh your units do not uh, overextend do not overstay and um, 
and just be aware of what is going on during a fight. Well, if you went out to hunt some farmers, uh, you know, AFK people, like you found, I wonder if I'll be able to find, uh, anyways, like, okay, imagine you can reach those uh, people, you, you decide, hey, I'm gonna go some hunting uh, farmers, and you see somebody else approaching you, well, don't just blindly engage into a fight, learn who this person is, of course, if you have time. Like maybe his power is higher than your, and it is not a good fight for you. Run away, retreat, that is fine. Do not engage in fights uh, that are clearly gonna leave you at a loss. Learn about your opponent, uh, see its, his power, uh, scout his legion, and uh, get to know who are you going to fight, if you have the time for that. If you're not sure, uh, well, maybe retreating is better than losing a lot of troops and ending up with full hospital uh, without ability to fight more. Do not be a trigger happy noob that just what all he does is just clicks enemy legion and leaves enemy uh, your own troops just doing that. This is not a good strategy, it's gonna get you killed and um, you will end up with a lot of troops in hospital. That is not a winning strategy. Uh, whenever you see a fight going on in a choke point, remember uh, it is best to leave uh, the enemy inside the choke point because you can then deal a huge AoE damage by, by spreading your uh, units around the choke point and dealing that AoE damage to all this cramped enemy with a, and restrain from overextending and pushing into the choke point unless you're like doing a big push with a rally. Pull back, let the enemy be caught in the choke point and deal all the big AoE damage inside that choke point. Never leave your troops AFK. If you are going to, if you send your troops and you know they they need to walk for two minutes before the fight, um, and you decide to like, oh, I can maybe make, mes make myself some tea or whatever, or maybe somebody called you, your relative, your wife, your your mom, whatever. Uh, do not leave your troops AFK in the middle of a war. Either recall them to your city if you do not know if you're uh, gonna be back anytime soon or if you're sure that you're gonna be back soon but you're still AFK, park your, your legion inside your ally city, inside a keep or whenever, anywhere where you cannot be basically AFK killed. This is very important because you otherwise can just be giving free merits, getting your troops killed, that is just not good. Park inside a city, park inside a keep, whatever, or recall your troops back home. And of course, do not do farming uh, during war, because enemies are going to send farm hunters and you're just gonna have a lot of wounded mm, farming units, whatever, you're using war rhinos, uh, workhorses, or you're using actual like axemen or spearmen, your archers, whatever. Uh, if you really want to farm, go behind a protected pass where uh, your enemy cannot get you. Well, yeah. Anyway, you're still, still at risk because enemy can pick your uh, march when it is uh, on its way back. Maybe maybe teleport out if you are uh, sure you, you are like out of troops and there, you, there is nothing you can do but uh, farm resources. But never leave yourself, uh, your marches out AFK when you are not in the game. During an active and uh, big fight with an enemy. Uh, another thing that is uh, that could be happening during uh, active fighting is city jumping. Meaning, like, imagine uh, we pushed all the way here uh, to the enemy. And, for example, this person decides he's gonna... Uh, drop a legion, attack us, and then go back into his city. Now, this is a annoying strategy, but it also makes your heroes lose a lot of stamina. 
So watch your stamina. If you're doing a city jumping, maybe uh, park your troops inside a lie city. For example, if this person wanted to do city jumping, well, he better off sending his troops into like next city next to his and do city jumping out of it uh, instead of doing it in his own city. It requires some extra clicks, uh, but you, you will not uh, drain all your stamina. One more thing that I forgot to uh, mention is, of course, uh, that during fights you want to uh, pick proper runes, uh, find yourself some attack, defense, HP rune, uh, that the one that is relevant during a fight. If you are going to take some rest, great option will be elixir rune. Uh, however, make sure during a fight you have a proper rune. Exception is if you are only joining rallies, well then the bonuses of the one who is doing the rally apply, so it doesn't really matter uh, what rune you have. Remember, it is percent based, so for example, if you're running mages, of course, best uh, rune will be attack rune, because that is the biggest base stat, and uh, defense rune is gonna be probably the worst one, or maybe HP rune is, is worse than attack rune. So. Of course, proper runes. Don't forget. Don't be lazy to pick them up. Send your uh, calorie. Send the lowest level calorie because uh, <coughs> because they have march speed higher than the higher level calorie. So have like at least few uh, lowest level calorie units in order to maximize your move speed when you wanna pick a rune or a chest far away. Now let's talk about rallies. Rallies are the meta right now uh, in huge fights a single mage rally could take out an entire enemy push um, now very important thing and if you are going to uh, learn one thing out of this entire video let it be this one specific thing if you see enemy mage rally or basically any rally approaching, but especially mage rally approaching your group fight, make sure you do not hit it. It is better if you delete the game, uninstall the game, uh, delete your account, whatever, than if you hit the enemy mage rally constantly. Mistakes could happen sometimes, but you have to be extra, extra cautious not to hit enemy rally, mage rally especially. Do not hit other rallies, because they will just kill you with counter-attack damage. You will not earn any merits from hitting enemy rally. You gotta make a counter-rally, like your own alliance rally against enemy rally, in order to defeat it. So you do not send your little small march to hit a rally. If this is a mage rally, especially if you're hitting mage rally, just uninstall, <laughs> or if, you're, if you have been doing that up to this point, well, then now you know that you do not, uh, you must not do that. It is super, it is very, and I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. Because what happens? Mages have huge AoE damage, area of effect damage. And whenever you hit a rally, it aggros you and engages you into a combat where it deals AoE damage around you. This AoE damage engages units that may be standing AFK or walking past or whatever. Uh, other allied units, they engage uh, with the rally. And if people are also not very... Um, they are not watching their own marches, they might not notice that their march uh, engaged with the rally. Now, you all gonna die from this uh, huge 2 million troops AoE damage. And... All the next uh, people standing to every engaged unit are gonna be hit with this AoE, engage with the rally, and this is gonna chain until everybody is dead. It just takes one person to hit the rally, maybe even by an accident, in order to wipe out entire push or entire, you know, force that you have gathered for the fight. So this is extremely if you see enemy rally approaching, 
all you have to do is make sure you do not hit it. Like, recall your troops if you have to. Just make sure you are not hitting the rally. Do whatever it takes to make sure. Also, it is very uh, useful to zoom out in order to see rally. Like, it is a much more clear what is going on when you are at this uh, kind of map instead of having everything like this yeah sure maybe it looks prettier but you don't you can't really understand like what the hell is going on it's just too messy it's too noisy just zoom out you will then you'll clearly see where the enemy rally is and do not hit it and by hitting it it's just not like targeting the rally specifically but make sure you're not using any artifacts that will hit it make sure you're not using mages that will hit it with aoe damage Right? Because if you're targeting, I don't know, like infantry or behemoth that stands close to the enemy rally and your AoE damage hits the rally, then the rally is going to aggro you. Make sure this does not happen. This is super important. Now, uh, whenever your uh, alliance does the rally, well, then that's the time to push. Uh, listen to the uh, officers, maybe you are going to send your troops in together with your alliance rally. Your opponents are going to do different little tricks in order to engage you into a hitting rally. They might walk right under the rally, they might uh, try to aggro you with a different march, then walk with that march uh, towards the rally so you hit it. It is super important that you watch uh, your legion not to hit enemy rally and uh, that if your rally is coming in that you do all those small tricks yourself you want the enemy to hit your rally in order for your rally to do all this huge aoe chain damage and you can get millions of like literally one rally could earn millions of merits uh, by doing so um, and you know you if you are part of that rally you're gonna be like 100k merits uh, while you will lose very little troops uh, as severely wounded because of the great technology uh, of the high power player that started the rally. That is all the advices that I have for now. It's been a 40 minutes long video and if you made it this far and I, I am pretty sure there will be like maybe one or two people and one of them being me myself who will made this far into the video uh, but yeah that's that's uh that's all, all i have learned so far and um, there is of course way more to this game and there are many more advices you can give uh about how to fight uh, in this game and i will be uh, really glad if you uh, leave uh, your advices in comments if you have any and uh, yeah i hope you have a lot of fun playing call of dragons fighting uh, in those big open field pvp battles and you will not hit any mirali <laughs> all right have a good one bye bye